The first news I'm going to show you today is called Depth Anything and comes from TikTok of all sources. Pretty interesting that they are working on this project. This is a new form of depth map that is very precise and has a huge advantage over the old methods. And of course, because this is for TikTok, it works really well with the video, as you can see here. On the left side, we have, of course, the input video. On the right side, you can see how very clear and precise this is cutting out. This is recognizing the elements here of that complex construct and that moving card with the people inside of that really, really surprising. Here you have another example of dolphins swimming around. And again, you can see how very clean they are recognized and also the different shapes of the bodies behind each other with the fitting depth from them. Really, really good results here. Let's look at one more example here. This is probably the most useful to TikTok, the dancing videos we have here, fast moving shapes. And again, the recognition, but also the cutout of the person different from the background is really impressive. So the result is very amazing. And the sharp outline of the person is really, really nice. And in case you're wondering why does TikTok actually need this kind of stuff? Well, they have AI filters and they have a lot of effects they apply and give their community to make the videos more interesting. So this kind of technology is extremely helpful for them to create an even more interesting and active environment for their users, creators and community. And the cool thing is you can try this out yourself today. Here I have a photo that I have created with Midjourney. And here you can slide with the mouse on the right side over the image to see what kind of result this is getting. The stunning thing here, I want really to pay attention to that, is the clouds in the sky. Because when you look at the part of the image here, you can see there is some smoke, some steam coming from that train here, here and here, where this is getting further distance from the camera. But there are clouds behind that that look like the steam and they are even connected to the steam. Yet. The technology is realizing that these are clouds that are further in the distance in the sky. And I have no idea how that works, but it does work. And the precision is absolutely stunning. The amazing thing is you can run this today inside of Automatic 1111. Now, what you need to do for this is you need to go to the extensions tab, click to check for updates. And then very important, you need to update the control net extension, of course, so that the depth anything is installed. When you reload, you go back to your text to image, you scroll down to your control net. Now on the left side here, you have the preprocessor for this. Of course, you want to select depth anything. The first time you're going to use this, it's going to download two different models, 1.5 gigabyte each. But on top of that, you also need to have the control net model to apply this to the image. For that, you want to go to the website I'm showing you here and click on this link you can download the file and you need to rename it to something you recognize like for example here the suggestion is to rename it to control sd 1.5 depth anything you want to download that into your automatic 1111 folder in there into the web ui folder in there into the models folder and in there into the control net folder where all of your other control net models are once you have done this click here on the reload icon for the models list and then select the depth anything model from the list depending on what kind of name you have given to that model. After all of this has been done, of course, you need to enable your control net so it's actually applied and then simply use your prompt, your negative prompt. This is working with a 1.5 model, set your ratio and so on and render the image you want to have. And here's the result that I got with my image without high risk fix. This is the depth map that has been created. Now, the interesting thing to notice here is because the background is completely black in that image, the far distance. When I prompt for mountains in the background, this is actually entering here a very nice mountain landscape in the background while the foreground has all of the details with the train, with the seam, even with this little spike that is sticking up here 
everything of that has landed in the image. Again, this is without high risk fix or upscaling. This is why this has pretty low details. There's a new project on GitHub called Instant ID. They describe their technology as zero shot identity preserving generation in seconds and show very amazing results here. You can also try this live today. Here we have a grid that shows their technology compared to other technologies that are already out there like IPA, IPA Face ID Plus, PhotoMaker. And then on the right side, we have here Instant ID. And the interesting thing here is that the likeness is very close to the original image, but at the same time, the style can be very strong in the image. And that is a combination that was this far really hard to get because you could either have the likeness, but then be kind of close to the original image, or you could have a very strong style, but then have the image not be so close to the likeness of the person. And as I will show you later in this video, these examples here are not cherry picked. You can test this on the Gradio demo live today and get really nice results that are very close to the quality that they present here. Here we have comparisons of other input images. In this case, not comparing different techniques, but different styles. And again, you can see in most cases it works really well. I think for the first image, this actually works the best, but also he has a very expressive face. And of course, the glasses help to recognize the person in the different images. Another thing that they are showing here that's very significant is, for example, you can do multi ID and multi style synthesis so that you can have inputs from multiple images and then render it into the same image. That is really stunning. And on the lower part here, you can see that this can even combine different backgrounds and different IDs in the same image. Now that gives you a very new range in the ability of artistic expression. And one more thing that you can see here on the upper right side is very impressive is the novel view synthesis where you have an input ID from the front where you can see the face nicely and then different poses as reference images and it can render this in different perspectives in different poses which is very helpful of course for different kind of scenes this is what everybody has been asking for and now it seems to be possible so here we have the testing page for instant id and you have two areas here for loading. One is for the face image, the likeness you want to load. The other one is for the posing you want to use here. Below that, you can write a simple prompt here that describes what you want to have. And then below that, you have here style choices and you have here the intensity of the instant ID for the fidelity and also for the detail to sliders to play around with. The rendering is kind of fast, so it takes about like 30 to 40 seconds to render one of these images and the quality, the result is fantastic. I can't wait for this to come to ComfyUI and Automatic 11.11. I'm going to do a video about that as soon as I get my hands on it. You can see here we have the face of this older guy here. We have the sideways pose of that portrait. I wanted to have a watercolor style here old man with a beard. The result is absolutely stunning because it looks like this guy, but seen from the side, it looks like a really beautiful watercolor painting. That is really mind blowing. It is very nice to have something that can transfer the likeness, but not the style because IP adapter had the problem where you can have the likeness, but it will also take the style with that. And that kind of defeats the purpose in many cases. Here we have another style that I've selected from the pop down menu. This is called the jungle style. And I can see here very nice large resolution. Again, you can really recognize the guy in the image, the same pose, very beautiful artistic style. I'm really mind blown by this. Here we have another example of the result this time with a different woman. And we also have a different pose sideways looking over the shoulder. Here I've written young woman. I've selected the neon style 
and this is our fantastic result here and you can see beautiful details it even picked up on the cap that the woman is wearing so that is very very amazing and it still looks like the woman in the original photo so that's very very good now i did find that the technology for now also has some limitations so for example this was not recognized as a face probably because of the strong freckle pigmentation and it also wouldn't apply for me this as a pose maybe that is a little bit too complex but this maybe could also be solved by using control net dv pose so i'm pretty sure there is solution for both of these problems to get very nice results with this oh you're still here so uh this is the end screen there's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool and yeah i hope i see you soon uh leave a like if you haven't yet and well um, yeah, 